Um, topic for this week, I'm going to be talking about my journey of moving from anger to acceptance when it comes to living day to day with chronic illness. Uh, personally, the chronic conditions that um, I have in my life at present um, include POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, the hypermobile type, and chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, it has been a journey in learning how to live with them, and I have to say in the beginning, um, it was definitely bumpy when it came from my opinion about them and how I now live day to day with them. Um, I want to share what has helped transform my mindset about living with chronic illness. And I'm going to be touching on a couple areas. Um, I actually put, I will put below um, a little bit more description in the video itself, but I'm going to be talking about um, embracing grief um, as the first piece, releasing anger, and finding power to heal through the process of self-acceptance and letting go. And I want to point out to start with that this process has not been linear, as many of the individuals that I speak with, um, both in support groups and with the clients that I work with, um, it's kind of like a river or an ocean, I guess the tides, it can ebb and flow based upon different seasons in your life. Um, but I'm happy to say that um, I have come out to a point in, of having a perspective of learning how to thrive and how to rebuild my life and enjoy it moment by moment instead of living, um, as Anne of Green Gables would put it, in the depths of despair. So, step one or at least piece one for me, was embracing that I needed to grieve. Uh, many of us that have a chronic health condition, um, I think, don't really realize that at a certain point, um, there's regret, there's resentment um, due to loss of a life that we had before of a or of a life that we had planned either in the present moment or in the future. And giving yourself some time to grieve is huge. Um, that can really help you move through the point that you're at. However, again, it's not linear, just like grief for the loss of a loved one or a pet. Um, it can come and go and continue to give yourself grace when those feelings do arise again. Um, by embracing this grief that was within me, at least for me, it was the I, the career that I had worked very hard for, um, gone to graduate school for and worked in for a while, um, seeing that I needed to let go of my particular vision or my um, I guess future plans per se with it uh, and begin to see my life where it was versus wishing that I had the life that I had planned. Um, this helped me to begin to accept the present moment and to see that I really needed to take it day by day as hanging out in the grief was actually making the state of my nervous system struggle more. Uh, I've talked about this, I think, a little bit in the past on another live. I talk about it with clients all the time, that the thoughts and feelings that we have about what's going on in our life um, what's going on with whatever health conditions that we're facing can actually affect the chemicals released in our body. Um, if we are having trouble um, with feelings of anger or grief, we can actually be stuck in a state of um, poor healing and energy draining versus a state that can help shift us into an energy healing mode. One of the other big things that I realized in moving from a sensation of being angry and in grief on a day-to-day -day basis was seeing that amidst all of the challenges that seemed to keep coming up and feeling like I was 100% out of control of what was going on with my health, um, that there was something um, very powerfully true. I actually still had control over a lot. 
Um, I had a control over the reactions um, to everything that was happening to me. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, we cannot control what happens to us in the world, but we can control how we react to it. And that is 100% true when it comes to navigating day to day um, with a chronic illness. We can't control um, the illness itself, but we can control the thoughts and feelings we have towards it. We can control um, what triggers us. We have control over the steps we can take to be able to make ourselves feel better. Um, instead of going down into a deeper spiral or um, being pulled down into a um, deep end of the pool like we feel like we're drowning, we can kind of throw ourselves a life raft and see that we can have some control into what to bring us back to the middle. Um, the anger and the frustration that I held for so many years was actually robbing me of that control um, and robbing me of a lot of time and a lot of energy. So when I started to release, let go, cut the cords, however you want to say it, I started to gain back a lot more control and actually saw some improvements in my symptoms and happy to say that they are continuing to improve by seeing that um, this control moment by moment is something that I do still indeed have. Part of getting back the control um, led me to begin to start asking myself some questions. Why was it so hard to let go of this life that I had dreamed of? Why was it so hard to let go of the fear and the worry and the what ifs of what is going to happen to me next year? What is going to happen to me even tomorrow if I feel this way? Um, the funny thing <clears throat> is actually, and it's kind of Hard to admit it even now is that these feelings of fear and worry and frustration were so strong um, and such a big part of me that they were tough to let go of because it was almost like comfort, almost like one of those um, weighted blankets. It was weighing me down, but it was keeping me comfortable, continuing to be scared all of the time. Um, I started to realize that if I could break free a bit from their grasp, I would begin to gain back more control and I would begin to let go of more of my anger and begin to come to a place of acceptance of how I could feel in the long run. So, and I do admit I have notes because it took me a little bit of a challenge today to organize all of this because it's a fun brain fog day. But that gets to the uh, acceptance piece of what's going on with your body when you have chronic illness. So when you begin to let go of this weighted blanket and you begin to see that you do have control over things, the layer that came underneath of that was seeing that I could move from feeling like I was a victim of what was going on to me um, going to others and saying, fix me, I need to be fixed all the time. Um, there's nothing wrong with going and asking for help, but if you're always looking outside of yourself um, and looking at what someone can do for you or what someone can give you to make you feel better, you, you can get stuck in a victim mindset and you can get stuck in a period of not feeling as that you're in control and continuing to feel like you're not going to be able to get out of that anger and that grief cycle. So there are some pretty cool tools to use to move beyond the, the fear and the worry that I share with, um, I guess I could say friends or clients as well. Um, one of my favorites that I continue to, sh to share is beginning to make a list either every morning or every evening of what you are grateful for. Because if you're starting to make those lists, you're beginning to retrain the typical tracks that your brain goes down. Um, this can be really tough. In the beginning, it honestly started out with, I'm thankful for my pillow, I'm thankful for my heating pad, and I'm thankful for my cat. Um, but that begins to retrain your brain to not go down into that fear and worry and lack of control and that anger state and begin to shift yourself back towards more of a neutral state where you can begin to find healing, whether that be mentally and physically or um, one of the other, to 
thrive with whatever conditions that you're um, dealing with. So, um, the gratitude can also help you let go of the what ifs and why me's. Um, I have to say from a very young age, when I first started having dis joint dislocations related to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and I'm having some extreme fatigue and not being able to participate in activities like all the other kids around me, uh, I asked what ifs, why me's, and that was just putting me in more of that victim mindset. Uh, and it, it kept me from seeing what I actually did have in my life around me and not being able to enjoy the moment to moment. Um, that is another piece that I love about the gratitude practice is that it does help you enjoy a moment to moment um, awareness that many of us um, can lose just in the general kind of society that we live in, but especially when you aren't feeling well, you aren't seeing what things you have in that moment that you can indeed be grateful for. And in those moments that you're tapping into that gratitude, you're remodeling and shifting yourself into a state where you can begin to negotiate. I had a friend bring this um, term up to me recently. I can't take total credit for for it, but um, he said that it's a state of negotiation with your body. And I love that mindset, almost like you're negotiating a contract with what is going to help you and what is going to hinder you on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, something you could also rephrase, what are your triggers and what are your resilience practices is commonly how I phrase it. But this ongoing negotiation of how how are you going to work for me today, body, and how can I support you through that process versus having a state of anger and fear towards it is something that can continue to move you in the path towards acceptance. Another negotiation pro tactic that I like to use is moving from being in a state of being 100% subjective of where you're saying, I am in pain, I'm having a horrible day, my life is falling apart, um, into more of an objective state where there is a person in, in this room in pain. That sounds really weird, but it actually works well. Or there is a person right now that's struggling and shifting to more of a love and acceptance, um, a self-compassion practice um, that some would refer to, to try to get back to that state of being in acceptance and not being stuck in your anger towards what's going on with your body. So negotiate, be grateful, and try to be objective and not be subjective when you're in a difficult moment. So self-acceptance and this process, all of this said, is not an overnight change. It took me a good, I'd say two years from when I started it. Um, it does not have to take that long, but I like to be honest um, with those that I'm talking about that it's not necessarily an easy process. It's a day by day shift in what your mindset is like. It's realizing that you do have control over your mindset and you do have the ability to continue to make small shifts moment by moment to embrace the life that you do have, that we each get one of them. Um, that's kind of a sobering fact if you think about it. But if we are stuck in fear and stuck in worry, that is detracting from the life that we do indeed still have. Um, no matter what um, approach you have about the purpose of life, we all really do still have a purpose and we all really do have um, the ability to find meaning in who we are and what we are and where we are. So, um, I hope all of that came across clearly. Like I said, this evening, I'm struggling with a bit of brain fog. It's been a little bit um, of a busy slash rough day. Um, but mindset is key um, and self-acceptance, moving towards self-love is really powerful when it comes to helping you to embrace your body and your mind as it is and to thrive with chronic illness. And if you are interested in learning some more tips on how to move from a period of feeling angry 
and having a lot of grief over where you are right now on your journey with chronic illness to a place of self-acceptance and self-love, I would love to talk to you. Um, drop a comment below this video and I will reach out to you. Um, happy to reach out to you by email if you feel comfortable with that, or I can send you a direct message on Facebook right here. And until next time, remember every single step you take is a step of moving forward, even if you take a step backwards or a few. Talk to you guys next week.